I'm Nick Record. I'm a senior scientist at Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences. And I work on all kinds of different parts of the ocean ecosystem. Um, I Largely my work is computational. So I have actually have a computer science and math background, but I also get out into the field and I, I work on all kinds of different ocean organisms. So one of the projects that I've been working on recently is a crowd science project that I use to monitor things like jellyfish. So I would say about almost 10 years ago now, people along the coast of Maine started asking questions about all the jellyfish that they were seeing up and down the coast. And at the time there was no funding for a scientific survey for jellyfish and nobody had really been monitoring them. So what I decided to do is start collecting reports from people who starting with the same people who are asking those questions and a couple of news stories were written and the word got out. And I just, I just uh, put out uh, an email address, jellyfish at bigelow.org. And people started emailing me anytime they would see jellyfish or really anything unusual along the coast of Maine. And it grew out to kind of the whole Northeast, including Atlantic Canada. And the reports started just rolling in. I think that first year, I got almost a thousand reports of people seeing different kinds of jellyfish mostly and other curiosities along the coast. And since then I get uh, many hundreds to a thousand emails every year of people sending in reports of jellyfish. I've never seen so many before. All the years I fished. The tentacles on some of them are about six or seven feet long. So, a little dangerous. Some of them are about six inches wide, some of them are a foot. Not a good day for them swimming, anyway. Nice out though, that's probably why it's, the one got warm so quick, but they just exploded in population. People also send me their insights about what's been happening on the ocean, which is really interesting. And I think doesn't come through in a lot of other crowd science projects. So I email back and forth with people when they send me in sightings and people will tell me things like, I've never seen jellyfish in the 40 years that I've been fishing here. Or uh, maybe something like, this is exactly what happened 30 years ago. Uh, we saw moon jellyfish this time of year for two or three years and they went away. I, those are just some examples that I made up. Or people will, will describe connections with other parts of the food web. So people might say, oh, that we find that when jellyfish arrive, the fishing for herring isn't as good, or things like that. And so there are all these insights about the ecosystem that you wouldn't get actually from a scientific survey that I only get because um, I'm, I'm talking back and forth with people up and down the coast of Maine and even up into Atlantic Canada and down into to Massachusetts and further south. So it's been a really interesting project. From year to year, it's really hard to say if there are more or fewer jellyfish in any given year, because you could just have more people at the beach sending in reports. There might not actually be more jellyfish. But you can tell what's different from year to year in the composition of the reports that come in. So this year, for example, we have been getting reports of some really giant lion's mane jellyfish. Up until I would say late last year, the largest jellyfish reports would be uh, the big ones would be about two feet in diameter for lion's manes, and everything else is really smaller than that. Late last summer, we got a report of a lion's mane jellyfish that was about five or six feet in diameter. It was washed up on a beach in down east Maine. And that was the first time I had seen anything like that. Um, it's not unheard of for that species. There are definitely reports going back hundreds of years of uh, the occasional large lion's mane jellyfish. But then this summer, I've gotten uh, quite a few, probably about 10 different lion's mane jellyfish washed up in different places from Massachusetts up to down East Maine that have been about four to six feet in diameter. All right, so I'm just gonna show you some of the photos that, um, that people send me when they send jellyfish reports. This one is actually from uh, one, of my, one of my best reporters, a woman named Zoe Weil, who is um, in down East Maine, and this is an underwater photo that she took. More typically, the photos that I get look something like this, 
but you can see right there that lion's mane jellyfish is many feet across. You can see the kind of the people standing around it. And these are the sorts of, of specimens that have been washing up on the beach. In the spring, it was, it was in Massachusetts. And now in the early summer, we're getting these reports mostly from down East Maine. Um, so here's another one, really large lion's mane jellyfish. Uh, this one made the news. This was on Peaks Island um, back in the, sort of more towards the spring this year. Um, here's another. And like I said, there were about 10 of these this year. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are still more to come. We're only just starting the summer. So there's always something new that happens each year. And it's, it's really interesting, uh, both uh, getting these stories in the news and just talking with people up and down the coast about the different things that they're seeing. I learn about what's happen happening in the ocean from people sending these reports, uh, usually before I would learn from scientific surveys or from other sources of information. So it's really cool working with a crowdsource project like this. So, so I use the data for a lot of different things. One of them is to just observe the year-to-year -year changes and, and to dig into why they might be happening. So hopefully by the end of the summer, we'll have so, enough good data to actually answer the question, why are we seeing these really large um, jellyfish? Another thing that I do uh, is, is I make a jellyfish forecast. Um, yeah, so what you're seeing right now is the, the uh, forecast for lion's mane jellyfish for today or it's more, more of a now cast than a forecast. Um, but uh, this will tell you kind of what, where and how likely it is that you'll see a lion's mane jellyfish. And so you can see now that we're into the summer, it's kind of moved up to mid coast Maine to down east Maine and up around Atlantic Canada, which is indeed where I'm getting most of the reports from uh, this time of year. And there's a slider here, so you could go back and look um, like, let's say, I'm trying to remember when the reports were coming in from Massachusetts, but I'll just try early May. Um, update. Oops, update. Yeah, and so as you can see here, um, back in May, the, um, the forecast was highlighting this area more in southern Maine and down into Massachusetts. And indeed, that's where we were seeing the lion's mane jellyfish that time of year. It doesn't work all the time, but it works pretty well. Um, and really, the more reports that I get from people, the better this system works, which is why if I can make a little plug, if, you, if anyone sees jellyfish, uh, send an email to jellyfish at bigelow.org and your sighting information will go into this system. There are a couple of other species, uh, the moon jellyfish, for example. So you can see um, that was earlier in the year. Like what if we update to today, July 8th, July 9th, but so that's also moved up toward mid coast and down east Maine this time of year, which is also where we're seeing moon jellyfish mostly. Um, yeah, and so that's um, that's kind of a new a new approach to forecasting that people haven't really tried before. We're pioneering in this lab using the reports of people on the ground to build daily forecasts of things in the ocean like jellyfish, and we're trying to expand into other species as well, like uh, different fish species and whales and things like that. So um, this is really the jumping off point, I think, for a, a whole new lens on the ocean ecosystem that comes from kind of this aggregated information that people all around the Gulf of Maine see. And you can, you can pull that together through mathematical algorithms. And, and through that lens, you get a new view of what the ocean ecosystem is doing on, on any given day. So it's pretty cool. So in general, jellyfish survive and thrive oftentimes in ecosystems that are stressed in different ways. And we've seen this in other parts of the world. So it could be due to overfishing, for example, because jellyfish compete uh, for the same food that fish do. And so if you remove those fish, it opens it up to jellyfish. They also do better in low oxygen environments where fish don't do well uh, because it, the, the metabolism of jellyfish is different. They, um, in areas where there's high human development, there's a lot of substrate for them to grow on. Jellyfish actually spend part of their life growing off of physical substrate before they um, sort of bud off into the, the part of the life cycle that we're used to seeing. Um, or if the 
the bottom, if the benthic habitat has been scoured by trawling or something like that, that opens up substrate for jellyfish to, to take over. Um, I would just add that a lot of people tend to think of jellyfish as a nuisance or as something bad, but actually they do serve a purpose in the ecosystem. They are, um, they're food for fish. They can keep the ecosystem going when it's really stressed and other organisms can't survive. And they're also just beautiful. So I think there are a lot of positives that jellyfish add as well, uh, just to give a little balance to uh, the bad rap that they often get. Thank you.